But now, the final episode in our short series of Scottish tales of the supernatural. It's set in the Scottish borders, where there's a strong tradition of ghostly storytelling, as you can discover as we visit the darker side of the border. The Brownie of the Black Hags by James Hogg Dramatised by Marty Ross I will no find her, I tell you. No way of breath still in her. Yon would go doing just splendid with many folk in the estate. <laughs> Off the folk out here search and felt her ladyship's whip. Fear in me is of the company she's lately kept. Fear we should run into him as led her out here on this godless moor. <laughs> the monkey. The bogle. The brownie. For the sake of the laird, we must search on an hour or two yet. Aye, uh, until next one. You there! Oh, here he comes now, the poor soul. Oh, he'll no last till next one out here. <laughs> Any sign of her, Watty? Uh, no, up here, your lordship. And what of him? No, your lordship, nor of him. And praise the almighty. The day he came, yon was the day her ladyship's path to this place was laid. Oh, before that it was. The day she poisoned that maid, Jessie. Aye, yon was the day she unbolted her door to the deal himself. Now, yon about the poisoning was never proved. Aye, aye, but we all kept her the laird and every cross flapping about the curtain here the day they buried poor Jessie. Command to the grave, the body of your servant, Jesse Miller. Ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Amen. Amen. Amening away like a holy Joe peasant, are we, James? Showing my respects to one who died before her time. You treated it to far more robust attentions when she was alive. Not here, Cara, please. Why? What are we to fear from some dried-up old stick of a minister and a few ditch diggers and laundry scrubbers? I shan't live in dread of their gossip. You assume I'll shield you from the consequences of what you've done. What have I done, my love? Oh, spare me the pantomime of denying it. I deny nothing. I am Lady Wheelhope, your unswerving wife. I should be beyond the suspicion of less reputable individuals, my husband included. I should cast you to them. But you won't. No. This does leave us one problem. Just the one. We are short of a servant. I have sorted that already. Without consulting me? The fellow presented himself. The situation demanded a ready answer. A man? Indeed. Perhaps I shall be the one keenest to have this servant hang on my call. He begins tomorrow. And then we shall see how attentive you find him. Ah, there you are, my dear. Been out riding? Riding around in circles. What better way has Lady Wheel hoped to occupy her time? What creature is this? Permit me to introduce the newest member of our household. Your ladyship? This ape? <laughs> Why, from what carnival have you bartered this creature? From the neck down, he's like some underfed boy. From the neck up, like some wizened soul of a hundred years lately crawled from his own grave. His name is Meridach. A name as absurd as the figure. Meridach. Is that your surname or your Christian name? It is all the name I require, your ladyship, to be eternally at your call. And in what capacity are we employing this object? to swing in our trees and pluck our apples. Oh, I had in mind a position for him as servant of all work. A jottery man, as my old father used to say. So, Meridach, do you think yourself cut out for the role of jottery man? I particularly look forward to attending upon her ladyship within the bounds of my office. Oh. 
What mean you by that? Your ladyship? By that look you cast me from under those reptile lids. Perhaps if your ladyship was to clarify the look she imputes... I will not be disrespected. And I shall not take your ladyship at anything less than her worth. I have been riding, Meridach, on the finest horse in my stables. That horse has served me better than any servant. Yet today it stalled at a fence and I thought nothing of beating it until its beautiful white flank was caked in blood. You can see the blood here on the end of my crop, can you not? I know the odour of blood, your ladyship. <coughs> Cara! There. Now there is some of your blood on it too, Meridach. <laughs> So my crop and my hand will know the scent next time you displease me. Bear it in mind. It will be in my thoughts, your ladyship. Then remove your unpleasant form from mine. Now. Your ladyship. My dear... If you have it in mind to complain of my treating the servants you impose upon me as I see fit, then I'd encourage you otherwise. Oh, no. No? I have an inkling this Meridach can look after himself. I was merely going to suggest you sit down by the fire. You look somewhat flushed. And so the Stramash got sell good. Oh, she hated you, Meridach. They came the business of her life to go at him day and night. Uh, at least it's there. The rest was her anger all of a sudden. Please be to Merida. Uh, mind what you say out here in these moors. He was a badger. Ne did not say anything the laird might dismiss him for. But knew just the tone of voice, the glint in your ease of his, as would set her ladyship ablaze. What in God's name is going on in here? If there is a reason why this kitchen's had a whirlwind blow through it, I'd appreciate its reaching my ears. Who's to blame? That grinning toad you've let hop under our table. All these broken plates and whatnot, Meredith. They're your doing? I confess, your lordship, they must be. And yet it's in her ladyship's hand I see the poker. Why, but... Allow me, your ladyship. My mistress, sir, does no more than wield her own poker in her own home. It was, I confess, my own cowardice toward the blows she thought appropriate for my skull that led to the breakage of so much of your lordship's good china. He hmm. flicks from me like the serpent he is. Well, if I can't land this poker on him, I'll at least see you dismiss him from his post before I set it back on the hearth. I'm not sure the dodging of such an assault constitutes a sacking offence. What? I will not dismiss him for a madness that seems wholly your own. You talk so to me in front of this sneering brute. I do not see him sneer. He sneers at me. Whenever he knows he can get away with it, vexing me halfway to... I know not why he does it, but I will not have it. If I have to beat him back into the pit myself. I shall not outstay my welcome if my master decrees it. One moment, Meridach. What was it that made you install him here in the first place? Did you apply to Satan for your jottery man? Did you do so to see me make a worse spectacle of myself over a servant than you did with your Jesse? Not here, Cara. Perhaps I should go and seek some assistance in the clearing away of this broken china. Yes, Meridach. Do that. He is not our servant. Can you not see? I know you, Meridach. You come to tear the house down around us like a worm in the walls. Your ladyship, if I might be so bold, is likelier to accomplish that with a few more swings of her poker. Meridach. I beg your pardon, sir. I merely intended to help her ladyship see the lighter side of the affair. Go. Your ladyship... I hate him, James. I hardly know why. Mm. And hate him all the more on account of that. And then, of course, it's the boy she starts flitting out. Aye. Poor wee lad. Our David. 
No, so far as I knew, she had been that coddling her mother to him before then. That's true. But then she saw the interest Meredith began taking in the boy. David! David! Oh, there you are. You wicked child. Mother, Meredith... What would you do now, Meredith? Steal my son. Steal him? Why, I thought to take young David for a ramble through these fine estates his father will one day bequeath him. We're not ten minutes from the front lawn. Hard enough for you to work some mischief. David, has he harmed you? No, Mother. No. That awaited you, perhaps, ten minutes further into these woods. You have me all wrong, your ladyship. I have you for what you are, sir. Now, come, David. No. What? I want to go with Merida. With Merida? Has this devil possessed your soul already? Must I beat him back out? Must I? <coughs> Must I? <coughs> come with me. <coughs> no. <coughs> James. James. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard David. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm worried, James. Mm -hmm. It's the middle of the night and... Mm -hmm. James. Mm -hmm. I'll sort it myself then, shall I? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll sort it myself. This hour, when all the spirits of hell are supposed to foot. Oh, yes. I see you there. No need to light the lamp. I know the way. No dreams, Meredith. No nightmares to make you restless in your sleep. You're like a little angel, blanketed there in the darkness. Such a sin for me to come and wake you with this knife. But you see, I'll never have another night's sleep myself unless I cut you from my mind here and now. You're Meredith. 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 Great God. What's up? Cara. What in the name of God? Oh. I, I, bring that up, your lordship. <laughs> oh. Dear God. She has murdered her own son. You have butchered my child. Oh, no, no. It's... It's Meredith. It's... I am here, your ladyship. No. No. No! I'll kill him yet. Stop her! No! Take her away, quickly! Come now, Meredith. Meredith! Meredith! 
David. Oh, the poor wee lad. How came he to be in your bed, Meredith? It was on account, I hate to say, sir, of the beating your wife gave the mite today. Uh, poor child couldn't sleep for the bruises and the heartbreak of it. Uh, came a-tapping on my door in the middle of the night. Uh, I calmed him, sir. I gave up my bed to him. He slipped away into his innocent sleep and I went downstairs to bed myself by the kitchen hearth. My wife intended that knife for you. It would appear so. Are you a devil, Meredith? Come to gather in our souls by making hell seem a saner home than this? You employed me, sir. Invited me into your house. A good servant is content to be whatever his master takes him for at first sight. If the error has been mine, I'll correct it now. You are dismissed, Merida. I thought it's what you wish. I wish my son alive. I wish any creature that connived in his death on the gallows. I wish the gallows could hold the agents of Satan. The world being fallen and unjust, I am content here and now to have you gone. Then I shall go, sir. <sighs> Leaving you my condolences and requesting that you convey to your wife my hope that she will keep her Meredith fondly in mind. Go! <sighs> Meredith. Meredith. James? Yes. Where is my baby? You have no baby. We, neither of us have. Not anymore. Your next question should be whether my influence in the county can save you from the consequences of your action. I'm not sure it can. I'm not sure I wanted to. I don't care. No. Oh. I wouldn't care either if I were you. I hate him. Hmm. I suppose I'd hate you just as much, Cara, if I could see any advantage in that emotion at this moment. Oh, there's advantage. Hate, I found. And here's the funny, terrible thing can give meaning to an empty life as surely as can love. Mm. I suppose. Having so little experience of the latter. Mm. Well, you'll have to seek some other stimulus. I have dismissed Merida. No. I won't have him taken from me. What madness are you talking now, woman? He's mine. Yes, yours. To hate. Yes, to hate. What else am I left? You must fetch him back. I'll follow him to hell first. I shall do the following then. To hell, if no warmer spot presents itself. Car, Car, come back. So, she was gone. Ran off after her Merida. Uh, if it was in the fairies that carried her away, the brownies. The fairies! <laughs> Made a lope, but we are coming, jotting him in mere like. I ah, will. She, she was gone. You and where the other? Uh -huh. Vanished during one of the peat hags the night she went a loping, if you ask me. But we saw her. What, he here and me? Aye. No two nights gone. Oh, aye, aye, Bessie. Either that or you and your good husband here took a dram too many against the wind blowing through your cottage uh, door. It's true, I tell you. There we were, Bessie and me, alone in the cottage. Me just back for checking my flock. Oh, what he? What he? Please be. He's the woman. I'm gonna fuss. I've nerves enough the night. What be yon wind blown and her ladyship vanishing with the brownies? A body has a right to fear for a man up among the hags. Aye, uh, and a man all right, I'm sure, to fear for himself. Why? What is it, he, what he? You're pale as a lamb in the fox's mouth. I heard. Who there? I don't know what. Up of the hogs. I thought it was a battle of wildcats and wished they might put out one another's thrapples. And then, thinks me, 
Maybe it's her ladyship in the hands of yon deal incarnate. Oh, Watty. There. Can you not hear it? It's the wind, Watty. Listen, woman. Oh, Watty. Get back for the door. Keep back for the door, I say. Oh, your ladyship. Watty. Is she dead? Off dead, at least. Beaten and bitten and bloodied, and I'd hate to think what else. Bessie, fetch them. Oh, Shh. Oh, by the Lord, she's alive. Fetch the Bible. Watty, look. Stepping up the path. I see him. The Bible, I say. Maradach. My lady, if there's power at all in mortal prayer, we'll... Maradach. The Bible. He, he... And still she screams for me. Cross not our threshold, devil. The devil has crossed it already. Why no a second? What have ye today with this poor wounded woman? Your man, close yon mouldy old book, and I'll tell you. I can hear what you say with a book open, sir. Then I will shut it for ye, and with a vengeance. Swatty! <gasps> there. Now I may announce my deed of charity without the odour of Christ in my nostrils. Charity, sir? Aye. A gift. A gift to a woman past her use to me. This wretch, this beast of the peat hags, ye turn her ladyship. Take her. Pass her to her husband and the lawful authorities. Whether to hang her or help her be a torment to her husband all over again. You, Meredith. It's you I'm wedded to. Woman, will ye cease tormenting me? No! Stay hey, back, wife. Be be any mere than she deserves. What he? Man to man. Yield under stone. This strumpet clings to me so. And though I beat her like a dog, she clings still. Enchanted, I'd say, with the notion of wedding herself to such hate as there is between us. And I am, you'll understand. Exhausted. Even the devil himself, I dare say, could be drained dry by such hunger in as there is in this young's heart. Are you not devil enough for me, Meredith? Woman! Is the flame in my heart a touch too hot? Spear me! No! Never! You are mine! You are my calling and deliverance! And if you have not the courage to stoke the fire high enough, I will lend my hand to the shovel. No, woman! Leave me be! I go! You, take her to her husband. Claim the reward. Save me from this maniac. Maradach. No. No, your ladyship. You must not go. Marty. Aye, aye. Help me get a hold of her. Let me go. <laughs> Maradach. You will not escape me. It is stronger than any deal this in. Your ladyship, no. Maradach. What he? Catch her back. Maradach. What he? Catch her back. Back in the place their trail leads. Better we pray to drum those twa out. Since then, nothing seen. I've heard her in the night, her voice on the wind, calling for him. Always calling for him. Nonsense, I tell you. Yeah, look. Look, over there. Eh? I found something. Come on. Aye, over by yon black hags. You can what it must be. Aye. You can picture, can't you? Her catching up with him. Out here in the night. On the moor. Up among the hags. Meredith. Meredith. I am here. I have made me her running in me. A wild place, this. I could find none wilder. Still, I could not escape you. We will never escape one another. I thought at first this blaze you fanned in my heart was but a spell you cast. I know by now what a truth in me you released. Too pure for either of us to be master of it. Oh, I hate you. And that hate, yours for me, mine for you, is more perfect than any love the likes of us could 
ever know. A diamond, don't you see? Hatched from black coal. I love my Melodyne. You love the smell of blood. Isn't blood warm in this cold world? Isn't the sting of it a gold into being alive? What have I to do with life? Come, Melody. Fight me with death. And I'll fight you with life. You've yet to pause and see in these eyes of mine what death at my hand would mean. Step closer, then. to be found. The crows and the beasts have had a chew while she's been lying here. Just the crows and beasts. What else? Wish, no. It's the land. Is she there? Is she? Lord, strike him blind. Cara! Cara! Oh, Cara. Shall we carry her back to the house, sir? What? Her ladyship, shall we carry her back? Is her soul here? Sir? Her soul? Is it lying with her here at the side of the hag? Can you carry that back? Yeah. Or does that outrun us still? Running after him, calling his name forevermore? Sir? Uh, yes. Carry that wreckage back. The rest of her will find its own place. Black Hags by James Hogg. Dramatized by Marty Ross. Lady Wheelhope was played by Irene McDougall. The Laird by Paul Young. Merodach by Jimmy Chisholm. Bessie and David by Mary Riggins. Watty by James Bryce. And Adam by Alec Heggie. The director was Bruce Young.